All right, in this video, we're going to look at uh, a little procedure to find a basis for the span of a set of vectors. And um, all it really involves is a bunch of uh, row reducing. So uh, at this point, hopefully, you're probably an expert on it. Everybody's favorite thing, a little, a little row reduction here. So um, the procedure is as follows. So we've got some vectors v1, v2, up to v sub n. Um, what we're going to do is form the linear combination, uh, set it equal to 0. Each a sub i is going to be a real number. Um, then we're going to form the corresponding augmented matrix. And what we're going to do is we're going to transform the matrix to reduced row echelon form. Um, and then what we're going to do is just identify those vectors in the original matrix corresponding to the columns in the reduced matrix that contain leading ones. Okay, so the first non-zero elements in the row is a 1. That's all we're going to do. I'm going to basically skip step 1 and immediately jump to step 2. There will be no harm done in doing that. So um, let's see here. Okay, so we're going to find a basis for these six vectors. Okay, maybe I should put these in a little, little set notation for this uh, set of vectors. Okay. Um, now, uh, an important little remark. I'm going to find a basis for these six vectors. There's nothing saying that that is a unique basis. I mean, I did an example uh, previously that, uh, you know, we, we found a couple different base, bases uh, for R3. So uh, certainly the, uh, these are not going to necessarily be unique. So I'm just going to find a basis that works. Again, there uh, certainly could, for sure, be other ones out there, so that's something that you want to be aware of. All right, so again, um, not the most thrilling procedure to watch, just a little row reduction. So let me put all my vectors down here. Hopefully it won't take too many steps to do. And again, now we're just going to try to uh, reduce this lovely thing. So we've got a 1, um, our top left element, first, uh, first row, first corner, so that's good. So I'm going to take negative 2 times row 1 and add that to row 2 to get my new row 2. Again, that will make that element into a 0. And then I'm going to take negative 1, row 1, and add that to row 3 to get my new row 3. Okay, so... Let me just jot the first row back down. So 1, negative 1, 1, 3, 0, 4, and 0. Probably if you're writing this, you could even just leave these zeros off as well. Um, you know, nothing's going to change with those. All right, so if we do negative 2 times 1, that's negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. Um, so that's already nice. Uh, we've got uh, negative 2 times 1, that's negative 2 plus 4, that'll give us positive 2. Let's see, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 plus 4. Again, it's going to be another uh, negative 2. Um, let's see here. We've got, we'll have 0 plus 1, which is 1. Uh, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 9 is positive 1. And then we'll have 0. I think uh, all the arithmetic there is okay. Then we have negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. When we do our uh, last little row operation, we'll have a uh, positive 1 plus 1, which will give us 2. We'll have negative 1 plus 4, which will give us, excuse me, hey, I said that backwards. Uh, negative 1 plus 5, which will give us 4. Um, we've got negative 3 plus a negative 1, that'll give us a negative 4. We'll have 0 plus 2, which is 2. Um, we'll have a negative 4 plus 6, so negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2, and then we'll have a 0. All right, so um, we could even, uh, you know, I see all of these are even. We could even divide all the bottom row by 2, maybe make the numbers a little bit easier, but I don't think it's really going to matter much at all here. So to get, uh, to put this in, I think, uh, hopefully our, our nice uh, reduced echelon form, hopefully, um, and hey, I think even notice things are going to work out even nicer. We'll see. Uh, but again, I want to get uh, uh, zeros in the uh, first row, second column, and also in the third row, second column. So we'll use that second row, uh, second column as our pivot element. So we'll simply take row 2, add that to row 1 to get our new row 1. And then it looks like we can take um, negative 2 times row 2 and add that to row 3 to get our new row 3. So hopefully I can do this without making any little careless mistakes. So let's see. 
Again, I always like to just drop down the row that I'm not touching. That way I at least know that I've done something correct, hopefully. Okay, so let's do the first, uh, the first operation, which is just adding row 2 and row 1 and replacing row 1. So 0 and 1 is 1. Uh, 1 and negative 1 is 0, so we wanted 2 and 1 is 3. Negative 2 and 3 is 1. 1 and 0 will be 1. 1 and 4 is 5, and then we have a 0. Uh, so negative 2 times 1 plus 2 is 0. It looks like we have negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. Uh, negative 2 times negative 2 will be 4 minus 4, which hey, is 0. Again, notice these are basically multiples of each other. We have negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. Again, another negative 2 plus 2, which is 0, 0. Uh, again, the last row is all zeros. That's A-OK. -okay. This is now in reduced echelon form. So basically, uh, it says the vectors that were in column 1 and column 2 in this case, uh, those will go back to our original matrix. So the original matrix, the uh, first two vectors we had were, uh, we had the vector 1, 2, 1. And uh, in the second column, we had the vector negative 1, negative 1, and positive 1. It says that these two vectors will provide a basis for um, that set of vectors that we started with. So that's all there is to it. You're just doing a little row reduction. Um, obviously, if you had some non-zero elements, you would have to keep this procedure up. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, it certainly didn't happen here. Maybe this element turned out to be a 1, and then everything else was zeros. Well, again, that would be in reduced echelon form, and then we would take the first column, the second column, and the fourth column. We would go back and pick out those original four vectors. But again, that's not what happened in this case. Um, once it's re in reduced echelon form, just look for the leading ones. Uh, again, whatever was originally in those columns, those will be your basis elements uh, for that set of vectors that you start with. So again, nothing too terrible, just a little row reduction, and uh, that's all there is to it.